Hello everyone, Alzion the Great here. Welcome to College Football Revamped on NCAA 14, a game that I have been thoroughly enjoying recently. And today I'm here to introduce you to a new person on the channel, although I guess you can kind of say he's familiar. Please welcome head coach Al Zion, as today we're going to be leading off with a new series, a dynasty series, as the head coach. There isn't going to be a specific team that we pick, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and start this dynasty, because I really feel like playing it. Get into the rules here. Uh, we're going to start at level 1. I think I... Just because I don't want to, you know, go completely over, we're going to go fast on the progression rate, and we will generate auto names. There are still some teams, even on the latest rosters, that are, uh, not fully set. Uh, now this dynasty is going to be unique, and I will adjust those penalties and game rules whenever I get back in for the first episode. But it's going to be on default all settings, and the reason for that is I'm going to be only doing coaching. I am not going to, you know, control anything like any player. I'm just going to control all the plays, do what I want to pick. I use the plays that I want to pick, but I am not going to actually, you know, physically tell, like, throw it to a receiver or anything. First big change are the BCS Bulls. I will be doing everything manually from week to week rankings to end of year bowl matchups. So, just so I don't have to worry about changing stuff a ton, or maybe actually making it so I have to change the whole stuff a ton. Everything's going to be open for the game to decide, but I am going to be doing all of that. Now, uh, in this in this episode, or in this thing, it's going to be my realignment series, so or my NCAA, so I'm doing it how I wanted to do it. In the ACC there, I think uh, West Virginia and Temple were added. The American stays the same. BYU is added to the Big 12. Uh, the Big 10 is how it is in real life. There isn't a whole bunch of change outside of a few conferences. Conference USA, I'm not sure why FIU says James Madison has the FIU thing. I'm not going to play them at all in this series, but yeah, Army and Notre Dame are the independents. The MAC looks roughly the same. I'm not sure if that's how it looks in real life. Mountain West looks the same as it normally would. The Pac-12 looks the same. And I will be looking at realignment, just kind of seeing how far things go. The SEC looks the same, but the big change is in the Sun Belt. Uh, that's now East-West. Uh, Western Kentucky stays, but other than that, it is how it is in real life. And now with all that done, I believe it is time to pick our team. And I already had a team picked out for this. They're in the Mountain West, and they're a team that I have a lot of history with as far as uh, NCAA games go. Uh, I Back on NCAA 11, which is my first NCAA game, I love to uh, start dynasties with them. I never finished them, but I love to start dynasties with them, and that team will be Colorado State. And the reason this is a head coach dynasty and not a Colorado State dynasty, I'm going to get a two-year contract, so I don't even know if I'm going to be at Colorado State for much longer, but we're going to try and, you know, stay here and not get fired, and hopefully that will work <laughs> as we get our selections here and now we get to choose our coach skills. Uh, I'll talk about scouting later. Uh, for absolute certain, but as far as a defensive coordinator, Freddie Banks, I do want to uh, start generating some pass rush and, you know, just try and get, you know, the advantage there. And obviously, offense, ball security, Matt Mummy, or Mum, however you say that name, is going to be the highest priority with him. As, yeah, we'll see how it goes, but. Here we are in the preseason, and now we can start talking about certain things. The first of these things that we're going to talk about is the roster, and this is certainly something that I was not expecting to see, just the entire composition of it, but our top player, besides the kicker, is Daquan Jackson, senior coverage linebacker uh, in the middle there. 
with some decent ratings, obviously. Best player on offense is running back David Bailey. Uh, we'll see how much playing time he gets. I'll talk about that later as well. And also linebacker Cameron Carter, the senior right as a linebacker, is our best. But where this team gets interesting is quarterback because they have uh, Clay Millen, Giles Pooler, Jackson Stratton, and Braden Fowler Nicholas. All of them are basically the same quarterback, with the exception of Fowler Nicholas having worse, a worse arm and being faster. But quite literally, as you see the ratings here, they are literally the same quarterbacks. And they're all freshmen too. And it's just... It just breeds competition here, because I have no clue who's our start, who our starting quarterback is, besides, I guess, Clay Millen, because he's the highest overall. At running back, it's going to be David... Bailey and A. John Vivens. I'm not entirely expecting Mauro Thomas or uh, Barut to get a ton of playing time. At wide receiver, it's also very interesting. Uh, Wright and Horton are two guys we'll have to rely on a bunch. I will talk about Makai Fox later. But with the exception of, you know, Fox and I think Ross Simmons. Every one of these receivers is going to be gone in the next two years. At tight end, we have a really good freshman in Arkin. The offensive line, it looks not really good. We have a good right guard in Davis, and the right side of the line as a whole looks pretty good. But yeah, not entirely sure how much I'm expecting from that. At the ends, Mohamed Kamara is pretty good there. He's our, probably the best player on the line besides Devin Phillips, maybe. We're good with certain players at linebacker, but the this team just in general is uh, not very deep as you know you'd expect. So we'll see what we get out of this team. Corner is not really fast, but it's really young as well. The safety situation is actually pretty good with King and Howell there, as well as Francis and Blackburn. Like we have some good safeties, but. We need better corners in order to take advantage of that. And we'll need a new kicker after this year. Luckily, we won't need a new punter after this year. But yeah, this team as a whole, obviously not super duper good, which is why I picked them. And it's going to be, a, a, I think, a pretty darn good rebuild. You know, being not in a Power 5 conference, being, you know... With, with a chance to move into a Power 5 conference. And, you know, it's going to be interesting. And obviously, with me being the coach here, it's less about the players and more about the playbook. And I have made a couple playbooks that I will be calling both offense and defense. The defense is just multiple D until I figure out what we're good at. But the offense, it's based around pistol. And it says that, but really, it's just stay off the offensive line uh, as much as you as much as we can I just don't entirely trust it trust the offensive line at the current moment so it, it says pistol it's more shotgun there's you know a lot of you know single back formations I think I have a couple uh, dual back formations in there excuse me I'm tired <laughs> but yeah we'll see what I do this season because I have no idea what this team's good at. We have a lot of veteran receivers, but we have no good quarterback to bring them or to throw to them. We have a bunch of like okay quarterbacks <laughs> to uh, throw to them. But yeah, uh, I don't really entirely know what this team is good at right now. So the plan is just experiment, see what we can do, see if we can establish the run. If we can't, then who do we rely on in the passing game? Like, I, I just don't entirely know how I was going to craft this playbook because I just did not know what our team was. <laughs> so I just kind of made a base playbook that I will be adjusting after every season. Preferably not every game, but, um, you know, if I see something, like, later in the season that's a trend, I will definitely be uh, using that. Also, we can talk about red shirts really quick uh, as I go through it in the on the screen here. Mostly I just redshirted anyone who I didn't think was going to get significant playing time, or in the case of like Morrow or uh, Makai Fox here in a second, it's less of the fact that 
I needed to redshirt them, and more, if we're going to lose a bunch of stuff, in, mainly in terms of Kai Fox, we're going to lose literally almost all of our receivers in the next two years. I want to have him as a freshman next year so we can be the number one pretty much guaranteed unless we bring in a high value recruit. But yeah, just if you weren't going to get significant playing time, or at least I didn't feel like you were going to get significant playing time, uh, I wanted you to be redshirted. I wasn't sure about the defensive end or defensive tackles there, so I only redshirted one of them. Also, uh, I believe I took the redshirt off of Brett uh, Amina. Yes, I did. I felt like he was too valuable of a guy. I didn't redshirt Floyd. He's too valuable a guy. Can't wait to see what Jack Howell does as a uh, as a as a good uh, as a free safety next year, as I should say. But yeah, it, red shirting is really simple. The only surprise one I think was Makai Fox. So yeah, and the depth chart should have been adjusted to do that. Apparently, Justice McCoy can throw the ball, so he'll be our third quarterback. Not that I entirely feel the need for that, you know, to, for him to be a third quarterback. I don't think we're going to run into too many injuries. And uh, if we do, it's okay. I can take the red shirt off of those two guys, uh, the two other quarterbacks we have. But I didn't really change much from the base uh, d uh, depth chart that came with this roster set. So there shouldn't be a whole bunch that is different. Amina is going to be the starting left outside linebacker, that's why I didn't uh, redshirt him. Floyd, who is the sophomore corner, who I didn't redshirt, he'll be the third corner. Uh, just making a small adjustment with the safeties, wanted Hector, and it's, I found it interesting that DeAndre Greeley could actually play safety. He's the fourth corner, so I wasn't entirely sure if I wanted him to do that. It might, you know, come to a point where he could play safety just to see if things are going bad, but I knew I had another one in Liam Huber, so I let him do that. And, yeah, other than that, I don't think there was many other changes that I wanted to make to this team. Uh, I will try and have the kicker be the kicker and the punter be the punter. I don't, I mean, I need to recruit one, which I actually forgot about kind of late into the recruiting section, which we'll get onto later. But yeah, um... We can talk about the schedule now, which is actually something I really, really wanted to get. So this schedule is, it has all the out-of-conference games that Colorado State has IRL with MTSU at Michigan and at Washington State. The only thing is, I don't want to play an FCS team, and I want to play Colorado, so we're playing Colorado to start the season. Mountain West play will start with San Jose State and end with Air Force. We get Wyoming in week 8. That'll be the border war at Wyoming, so it'll be fun. Unfortunately, we play Boise State at home this week or this year. But yeah, basically the only difference between Colorado State's real schedule and the uh, schedule I have here is we play Colorado instead of an FCS team, and the position of the out-of-conference games is messed up, so we won't play Michigan to start off the season. But yeah, here are some practice highlights, and I just wanted to set you know, some of the expectations, I guess, for the team. I'm not, uh, and as I said, I'm not entirely sure how it's going to go. I mean, there isn't a whole bunch of star power on this team, and most of it's on the defensive side, which is not entirely what I like to have. I, w I prefer, you know, have a good offense, although if I must say defense is uh, entirely necessary in this game. <laughs> but yeah, for now... At the quarterback position, it's just going to be Millen. I mean, I've literally seen him play in real life before, and he's the highest rated, so I, I don't have, you know, another plan outside of him at quarterback, you know, unless we're going to go with uh, our backup that we'll see in a few minutes. I did put him in just to be sure, you know, I wanted to see what we had. But yeah, I actually try to do my own quarterback competition, you know, with everyone, even the uh, wide receiver getting some passes in but in the end it was just inconclusive like everyone was accurate and everyone and this was with no defense on by the way I did this so I didn't even get to the defense point because it was like I don't really see a difference in the accuracy here between the quarterbacks and I don't know how much running is going to be a, a 
a thing, not only running with the quarterback, but just running as a whole, because I, I don't really know about this offensive line. The left side is not that strong. The right side has some solid players, but can we, you know, beat some of the, you know, can, can we go into Michigan and run the football? Like, I don't think we can do that. Like, how are we going to, how well are we going to run against Colorado? I haven't looked at their roster yet. We'll do that in the uh, first episode before the game, but I just don't know how much we're going to run. There are options, like uh, the option play type in this playbook, and I do entirely plan on running some option. Although I think Fowler Nicholas, the fourth quarterback, who is uh, redshirted this year, I didn't get any reps with him, but if we absolutely, if I absolutely feel like we need a running quarterback right now, Fowler Nicholas would be the best. But for now, it's going to be Clay Millen until further notice. I am flirting with the idea of giving Millen and the other quarterback that I keep forgetting their his name, as I believe I put him in here. So we'll see it in a second. Uh, Pooler, I I have flirted with the idea of doing something like Jim Harbaugh is doing this season with Michigan, uh, starting one in the first game and then uh, starting Millen in the first game and Pooler in the second game. Even though both of those games we need to win, so I don't entirely know you know how far it's going to go and just kind of walk into Michigan and with the starting quarterback that I've decided uh, I'm kind of leaning towards that right now but I'm not entirely sure you know if there's going to be a difference in quarterback play because they're literally the same guy I mean both have 80 throw power I think Millen has slightly higher accuracy both have them both have the same speed pretty much so we're just going to have to rely on, you know, whoever has the hot hand. And I could definitely do a dual quarterback system. I'm not worried about transferring away, honestly. If one of them transfers away, it'll probably help us. Because then we'll hey, say, hey, the other one's just as good. We have our starting quarterback now. And it's just, it's a unique situation with this team. Because I knew that they had, you know, a freshman starting quarterback in Millen. Like, I knew that. I just didn't know the rest of the roster was freshmen as well. Uh, if I had to talk about anything else, the receiver situation is probably the most concerning thing on the team. Not necessarily the talent we have, but more the talent we're going to lose, which is all of it. Because um, only Horton, I believe, who's the number two receiver right now, he's the only guy who's going to return with, like, catching experience. And then even like for next year and then even then even then he's gone after next season so we're gonna have to you know recruit wide receiver pretty well and obviously it is one of the top needs in the game as speaking of recruiting going to transition into that now first look at our official team needs we the game says we need a fullback I'm not gonna be recruiting a fullback but we do need three wide receivers and a kicker on offense other than that, besides getting more offensive line depth and maybe recruiting a couple running backs, I don't really think we need much else. On defense, we do need a defensive end. Uh, and obviously, we're graduating at least one in almost every position except for free safety. So, yeah, here are your top prospects. And as you can see, Chris Varga is number one. And I do want to say this does contain created prospects, people that I made, and not all of them are five stars. Varga, just, you know, simply because I, I don't think it'd be realistic. I'm going to try and keep this as realistic as I can, but yeah, I did make at least 20 players, and not all of this is going to be, uh, you know, applicable to us, not all of them we're going to see, but I do want to try and keep their careers, you know, in our minds. This 35 five stars is, I think, okay. The other five star quarterback, Mili Mili Kahananui. <laughs> I think I said that right. You just see what he has. You know, all SEC schools in Notre Dame. <laughs> it's just, it's just funny. But I actually, I'm actually quite proud of myself because I actually managed to make some prospects who aren't, you know, over overpowered five stars and actually made some four stars and three stars. That, you know I might be able to recruit as we go through and just look at the wide receivers and everything I just kind of wanted to give you a kind of view of how the 
class looked, just in general. Obviously, one of our needs is defensive end. There's three five stars. Don't think we're going to go after him. But we can look at the players in Colorado, and there actually is a five-star recruit from Colorado, John Burley, and I'm definitely going after a five-star recruit from Colorado as I want to recruit, you know, from our state and just, you know, Keep, make sure we have you know a decent pipeline in that in our own state you know that makes sense and I think I don't know if I recorded pipeline states I did take a look at it I think we have like Florida we're gonna lose next year and I think California is the other pipeline but I also went through I wanted to look to see who is interested in Colorado State as a whole if you ignore Sean Howard, it starts with Harley Chestnut Jr., who, yes, is a custom player, but I had, uh, obviously not all the custom players are interested in us. As you see, there's a ton of defensive ends on this list, so I'm not even remotely concerned. But we can talk about recruiting later as we need to finalize the board. For now, I'll see you guys week one against Colorado. Thank you all for watching, and see you next time.